Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at RSA 2024 in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. I'm joined today by Haim Mazal. You are the CISO at Gigamon. Uh, Haim, this is your uh, first appearance on ZCast, so happy to have you. Uh, just a quick bio on yourself. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me. My name is Haim Mazal. I'm a Chief Security Officer at Gigamon. So my responsibilities at Gigamon are securing our product, our corporate infrastructure, uh, as well as our IT uh, environments. And so uh, really excited to be part of a great mission statement of securing uh, the world's largest, most complex networks uh, and serving um, you know, some of the largest organizations in the world. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this, having this conversation because uh, you have a big role, <laughs> right? And uh, one of the things I like about Gigamon is uh, you play in the visibility space, which is uh, core to a lot of the themes I've seen here at RSA 2024, including visibility, or, or AI, uh, uh, zero trust, things like that. So I want to dive a little deeper th with you on the topic of zero trust. So uh, uh, let's go down to the show floor and have a conversation down there, though. Awesome. Let's take a look. Okay. Well, Haim, I, th I think a good place to start the conversation on zero trust is, uh, what is it, right? This is a, a one of these taglines, unfortunately, that many vendors use, and it's I see zero trust this, zero trust that. Uh, but definitely, definitionally, how do you think about what zero trust is? Absolutely, definitely a, a hype phrase. Um, so I think that it's a government uh, dictate, but really what it is, it's a comprehensive plan, a layered approach to how we view security. That means looking at the network level, looking at the asset level, and then looking at the identity level and having comprehensive visibility and security controls layered on. Zero trust is definitely not a product, right? Yeah. It's definitely a concerted effort uh, through a couple pillars uh, that we can help to achieve end-to-end uh, -end security uh, across a multitude of environments. So when I think of zero trust, I actually think about it a little more simply, and that it's uh, a fundamental change to the way we think about networking. You know, uh, when you think about the internet, it works really well because it's built on the premise that everything can talk to everything. With zero trust, it seems, we've almost flipped that model around where nothing can talk to anything unless explicitly allowed. Is that a good way to think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to say that uh, we're going to give implicit trust uh, to nothing, and we're going to have a validate and verify approach going forward. And that could be from, again, at the network level to the asset level to the identity level. We have to make sure there's a comprehensive plan to be able to allow that interconnectivity and communication uh, that's led by a, a couple different methodologies. One could be cert-based. You know, there's uh, you know new policy engines that are helping to dictate, uh, but there's a lot of emerging technologies that are continuing to push the envelope for how we allow that segmentation and communication on the premise of everything is malicious traffic. All right, I'm well. Um, you know, continuing our discussion here. Um, when you when you think of um, zero trust and what Gigamon does in the area of visibility, what's the role of visibility in Zero Trust. I'm looking for that intersection point. Yeah, so one of the key pillars uh, in Zero Trust is visibility. And vis visibility is all-encompassing. Uh, it it is uh, included in all the other pillars. So basically being able to plug in the appropriate data sets uh, across the appropriate environments to get real-time feedback uh, in relation to your, uh, you know, security, uh, your defense in depth and security posture. So what does that mean? That means taking real-time network level telemetry that's immutable, right, and being able to feed it into the right tools at the right time so you can get the right insights uh, across all, all of your, your visibility platforms. So that means, you know, whether we're talking about your security operations team, your network operations team, uh, or any of your other key uh, operational tooling uh, to get the right data to be able to make the right decisions uh, that give you the right feedback. So Gigamon really focuses on having that end-to-end -end steel thread of having a unified data set across all your items in real time. Okay, well, given how much momentum there's been in the Zero Trust and how much you know vendor washing, if you want to call it that, there's been, what's holding companies back today? Why, why, why isn't it a lot more widely deployed than it is? I think one thing that we can guarantee for established organizations is complexity, right? Yeah. Uh, the more successful you are, the more complex your environments are. So a lot of times, it's um, difficulty of implementation. Uh, right, it's a pretty big initiative uh, that covers uh, a myriad uh, of different methodologies and thinking about how you can responsibly uh, plug in all of those data sets, all of those controls across all your environments is a pretty daunting task. Um, but with the right tooling, you can have additional insight and visibility that will help you and allow you to do it in a much easier capacity. And I think that's one of the other strong points of Gigamon is that it helps you architecturally map out uh, your best way to achieve zero trust 
in complex environments, whether that's cloud or uh, on-premise. And part of the way you do that is through partnerships. Absolutely. Like, uh, for example, you, you know, we did stop in front of the XDrop booth. You have a partnership with them. Talk about that that relationship between you and yeah. XDrop, how you two work together. Absolutely. So. Uh, one of the big things is being able to take your different security tooling and providers and being able to plug them into that comprehensive overview. So taking something like an NDR, Network Attention and Response Tool, and being able to take all of the pertinent information across all your environments and fine tune it so your security operation seems to be more successful, we think that that's a very strong value proposition. So that's why we partner with XDrop and a whole bunch of other leading uh, security providers. Now, one of the important components of Zero Trust is micro-segmentation. Absolutely. Now, uh, it's funny you bring up complexity because uh, I think uh, micro-segmentation is very powerful. Absolutely. A lot of companies tell me they can kind of get it set up to start, but in dynamic environments, it, yeah. it doesn't, uh, it's very difficult to change. So uh, uh, when I've talked to customers, a lot of their best plans, you know, have gone awry and those, those initiatives have failed. Yeah. Um, how does visibility help them with yeah. micro-segmentation? Yeah, I think micro-segmentation is uh, critical and a key component uh, to zero trust. But obviously, uh, you know, a lot of companies have difficulty with it because they lack that visibility. And network segmentation isn't a silver bullet within itself, right? Because there's a lot of network pivoting, there's a lot of east-west traffic, there's a lot of observation via encrypted traffic. And without having the appropriate visibility to that, right, network segmentation uh, doesn't take you very far. So being able, one, to map out and route uh, patterns in your traffic across your network is key. Gigamon helps with that. And then number two, being able to have identification of uh, lateral movement across your network via east and uh, east-west traffic is also critical. Uh, and then also being able to look within this micro-segmentation and look at the encrypted traffic and be able to decipher whether or not something is malicious or not on the fly with our decryption product is something that we strongly believe in. So all of these things we believe help lift up uh, micro-segmentation within the Zero Trust framework. So where I find a lot of companies struggle with, with, with micro-segmentation is in dynamic environments. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, I'm not gonna say it would be easy to set up in a stack environment, yeah. it's still very difficult, but as soon as you start to have a lot of moving parts, it gets more difficult. And so uh, I think from uh, what you described there, in a highly dynamic environment, you provide the visibility to at least let them know what's changed and how to change it. Right. Absol yeah. Absolutely. Um, in real time, again, dynamic environments for organizations that move fast, uh, there is no easy way uh, to implement these things without having uh, the visibility of ongoing changes uh, through some kind of tooling. And so Gigamon lends itself uh, by giving commonly used routes and traffic and changes as they happen in real time to network operations teams, to security operations teams, so they can figure out the right approach to network segmentation for their organization as they continue to grow their product lines. Okay, now, uh, drill down a little bit more, too, on, on Gigamon and stuff. You guys have been using the term deep, deep observability, yeah. which is, uh, I think, plays off, obviously plays off the observability uh, hype yeah. that we've seen, but absolutely. Uh, how are you differentiating deep observability versus the way a lot of other vendors yeah, use from observability? Absolutely. So deep observability is us taking all of your observability tooling, all of those metrics, and enhancing them through data pipelines with immutable network traffic uh, that can uniformly be applied across the board. And what that means is taking a uh, certain level uh, traffic and telemetry and being able to enhance all of your observability tools and all of your security tools in real time. And what does that mean? That means network flows and routing traffic, that's important to those tools and not everything else, which means cost savings and effectiveness. And it also means being able to make sure that your security operations team is taking actionable items against data that matters, right? Which means reduction yeah. of false positives and reduction of uh, uh, instances of alerting that might not be important to you or that you might uh, not find useful. And how important is that for companies in the overall desire to try and simplify security, right? Yeah, if, so. Because um, I've, I've talked to some customers where, you know, they've, um, in, it seems like companies spend uh, way more money on security than they ever have. Yeah. Uh, breaches still happen, yeah. and a lot of CISOs, I'm sure you've found this, uh, complain that they just don't get the bang for the buck. Absolutely. And part of it is it's gotten too complicated. Absolutely, so we have unique tools for uh, unique challenges. We have resource constraints. Uh, we have loads and loads of data. We have log fatigue, uh, and there's not a tremendous way in a lot of instances uh, for teams to be successful uh, bringing all of those scenarios into play. So what that means is simplifying 
what our tools ingest, making sure that it's valuable, it's important, and that we can also go ahead and effectively um, send that data where we need it to go and uh, not have uh, exorbitant ingress or egress charges from data environment to data environment. So really, it's taking valuable information across all of your assets, right? Whether that's your, um, again, network operations tooling, security operations tooling, uh, application visibility tooling, and making sure you're feeding them the right data from the right places and helping your team to be successful in their mission statement of securing and operationalizing your environments. And so as companies do that, obviously AI is going to play a bigger role. Absolutely. And that's actually, it's, you know, you look around the booth here and there's AI here, AI there. Uh, where are customers' heads with AI? Are they excited about it with security, scared of it? Is it yeah. something they're testing the waters on? It, it yeah. seems, uh, uh, I hear a, a lot of hype from the vendor community. Absolutely. But when I talk to customers, uh, there's not a lot of deployments that I've seen. Yeah. So I think it's multi-pronged. I think, again, there is uh, the product portion, uh, which is being uh, hyped quite a bit right now in the industry. So AI, so machine learning, data science has been around. Uh, probably for the last you know 10 years. And uh, a lot of technologies have been utilizing it, but I think because of generative AI, there's been a big emphasis on it recently. But yeah. I think we're watching security teams start to utilize it for their effectiveness and, pr and process and procedures and the ability to be able uh, to garner and produce more results uh, with, uh, less, with, with less investment, right? Yeah. So, well, my feeling is if the bad guy's using AI, it's a little bit of fight fire with fire. Oh, it was, it was like early in the cloud cycle when the threat actors started leveraging the cloud, right, that you really couldn't then try and secure your enterprise using a lot of old on-prem techniques. And so, uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I do think that security pros tend to be fairly conservative. Yeah. No offense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes you fight change, but I, I think of AI as maybe the most powerful tool that a security pro has had. Listen, I think this has exponentiated the uh, yeah. volume of attacks that take place uh, against organizations every day. The ability to automate and uh, to take uh, high level and low level attacks uh, and simply, you know, automate them from every single perspective ac 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 across uh, across the gauntlet. So what does that mean? That means more notifications. Uh, that means more alerting. Uh, that means more log fatigue, more inundation. And so I think one of the big portions is how we combat that uh, is again by leveraging automation and AI internally ourselves and also using the right tooling like Gigamon to be able to say like, hey, these alerts are important, this data set is important, uh, this piece of information doesn't have to go to 18 places, it can go to two, uh, and being able to make it more manageable for our teams in real time. As the threat landscapes continues uh, to increase, being able uh, to create efficiencies within our teams to respond in an effective way is critical. I think Gigamon really lends itself to that. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, I've talked to some people that were worried that AI is gonna take their job. Yeah. What I tell them is, you're not gonna lose your job to AI. Yeah. You're gonna lose your job to a security engineer that uses AI. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I, I, I talked about this a lot yeah. too. I think it's just gonna up level the skill set. Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is not replacing uh, engineers, this is not replacing security professionals, uh, but this is helping uh, up level the skill set at the entry level, just allowing us to be better. All right, Hein, well, let's bring this home for my audience. And we've talked a lot about AI, observability, and for companies looking to move forward with Zero Trust, what are some best practices that you can recommend? I think it's uh, taking a layered approach and going back to basics, really focusing on IT hygiene. Uh, you know, simple things like uh, vulnerability management, identity and access management, uh, you know, uh, 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 patching, um, and looking at, um, you know, creating a comprehensive overview of all your assets, right? It's hard to secure what you can't see and what you yeah. don't have insight into, and being able to fully map out what's important, the criticality of your, your assets, uh, and then coming up with a layered approach on how you're gonna secure them, I think is really the winning game plan here. You know, it's, it's interesting that through all the security innovation we've had over the years, better visibility, defense in depth, with the layered approach has always been the right answer. 100%. And I guess in this case, you're saying, use those best practices that you've adhered to you know, all throughout your career, absolutely but apply it to this point. 100%, yeah. MFA everywhere, yeah. right? Like security doesn't have to be that complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, anything else you wanna add? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I just wanna say Gigamon helps secure the world's largest, most secure, complex networks. Yeah. And uh, we can help you too, reach out. And if people wanna learn more about Gigamon, they go to? Yeah, go to gigamon.com. Well, that's pretty simple. Yeah. So, as I'm behind, uh, on behalf of Hyman Zal, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. 
Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.